to MH370. Well, as the search continues, questions have been raised about the need to advance search technology. More than 50 aviation, communications and law experts have come together with the Malaysian government in Kuala Lumpur for two days of talks on the issue of real-time monitoring of flight data. Well, leading the delegation on behalf of the International Telecommunications Union is Malcolm Johnson, and he joins me now from Kuala Lumpur. Uh, Malcolm, thank you very much for uh, being with us. Just tell us what you're hoping to achieve at these talks. Yes, well, uh, today, of course, we're all so well connected and uh, in, we have uh, cloud computing and big data. So it's very difficult for the public to understand why 11 weeks after MH370 disappeared, we still don't know exactly what happened, and that we have to re recover the black box in order to retrieve the data. So the Malaysian government uh, asked the ITU to organize uh, this a dialogue between experts from all the various interests to look at how we could develop international standards, policies and regulations to make sure this doesn't happen again. So it's uh, quite a unique event because we have the aircraft manufacturers, we have the airlines, avionic companies, the ICT companies, software developers and all the relevant international bodies uh, here to discuss how we can uh, develop the uh, the requirements to ensure that we download uh, this data from the flight uh, in real time and we don't need to have to recover the black box in, in the future. Yeah, I mean, what we're so talking about, been, Malcolm, uh, is real-time tracking solutions, real-time tracking of the black box data. But, but why has it taken a situation like uh, MH370 for your union, for example, to come together to lead this delegation of talks? I mean, why haven't you done this before? Well, uh, the Malaysian government asked ITU to do it because we're the lead UN agency for information and communication technologies. We also have ICAO here, which specifies the uh, requirements for uh, onboard uh, systems. What uh, we do have the technology, the technology is currently available and there are several uh, systems available now for tracking aircraft that have been uh, implemented on, on many aircraft. Uh, in fact, some governments now are requiring this and some airlines are voluntarily fitting it. The problem is that uh, there are four or five different proprietary systems and there's no international standard that will ensure that we have worldwide interoperability uh, and uh, compatibility so that it's a global uh, uh, system. And this is the issue we need to address. If we download in uh, the data, we have to decide on who's going to be the custodian for this data. Sure, I know, I, but to, forgive me for uh, interrupting you, Malcolm, but you know, if, if families are listening to this interview of the people w that were on board the Malaysian's airliner, uh, that would be little consolation to them to know that this hasn't been rolled out. Uh, I mean, is this about money? What is this actually about? I mean, what are you hoping to achieve? Are we going to see this uh, finally being implemented the way it should be? Yes, I believe so. Uh, from the discussion we've had this week, uh, it's clear that it's possible now to track aircraft, uh, the position of aircraft and the altitude. We have that technology available and it's going to be implemented uh, very, very soon. What will be more difficult is to download all the data that's collected on a plane in real time uh, for the, the reasons I've just mentioned. But to have, we've had all these uh, experts come together and uh, there's a very positive uh, mood to, to move forward to make, uh, instigate an international effort to ensure that uh, the likes of MH370 never happen again. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we do hope that there is a, a constructive solution to the talks you're taking part in. Malcolm Johnson there from the ITU. And we should just say that uh, these talks are due to end with the Malaysian government uh, later on today. Any developments on that, we will, of course, bring that to you live here on BBC News. In other news for you, though, let's move to Egypt, where polls have closed on the first day of voting.